Hey everybody, it's Murgle, and today I thought it'd be fun to make this video talking about some of the most expensive items you can still farm in-game. Now I'm not going to count current raid drops, because even though these items can run upwards of 1-2 to two million gold when they Titanforge amazingly, these aren't exactly soloable content. But anyways, let's just jump right into it. First item I'd like to show off is the Jade Breastplate. It's a Kalimdor wide drop, okay? And it drops off mobs anywhere in the 52 to 55 range, most commonly. And there's a couple of places you could go to farm mobs these levels, but I would highly recommend doing it here in Winter Spring at the Frost Whisper Gorge. The reason being is the mobs I'm currently showing drop Essence of Water very frequently, which on its own can sell quite well. Um, but not only because of that, the fact that it's in Winter Spring, you also have a rare zone chance at an Azure Whelpling, which is a quite expensive, running between 30 to 40k, and overall giving you a decent rate at getting something good while you're farming this. The mobs in this location are in an instant respawn, the faster you kill them, the faster they respawn. So. While you can do it alone, I highly recommend popping up a looking for group and seeing if you can find anyone else willing to join you in this farm. It doesn't hurt your profits in any way since you have personal loot style and actually it'll increase the amount you get per hour. Optimally, you would have five people and try and spread them out pretty evenly throughout the gorge. Then after one minute of massacring, have everyone fly around looting all the corpses that they were in radius of. And if you're lucky enough, you might stumble upon the chest plate, and that can get you anywhere between 125,000 to 150k. Next, we have the Jade Leg Plates, the counterpart to their Breastplate Brethren. By the way, these items look much better on female characters. That's probably who's going to be purchasing them when you put them up for sale. But in any case, when you go for the Jade Leg Plates, I would recommend heading on over to Zul Farak. And the reason being is, not only can you pick up these legs inside of here, but there are a large amount of transmogs that drop in Zul Farak that can be worth quite a lot all their own. I'd say the average of the mogs that you can pick up, aside from the pants, are anywhere between 1,000 to 40,000 gold. So there's definitely a lot of good finds you'll get on your way to try and get in the pants. And uh, if you're planning to farm Zul Farak, I almost wouldn't say bother doing it unless you have a druid, because the mobs in this instance will dismount you with a special attack that they have, and it slows down your runs immensely. However, if this isn't a problem for you and you're in no way in a rush, then still absolutely head to Sulferak and uh, just you'll get dismounted a lot. That's really the only thing you gotta worry about. And if you happen to pick up a pair of these nice trousers, you could easily fetch around 150 to 175,000 gold for them. Onwards to some more pants. <laughs> we'll be looking at the Vanguard and Glorious Leg Plates. Now, because of their item levels, they're dropped from essentially the same monsters. Meaning anywhere you farm for one of these, you might possibly get the other as well. Now I'm at AQ20, and there's a very select few creatures in the instance that are even capable of dropping these two bad boys, simply because of the lack of monsters that are around the level required. These are located far into the instance, on the lower east side. Once you finally run, you're about over there, and you'll find a lot of bugs. Big surprise, I know. <laughs> but these tiny level 55 bugs are actually within the level range capable of dropping these good old pants. However, I would definitely recommend killing everything in the area excluding bosses, as you can pick up some other mogs of very high value. I'd say the range of many of the mogs that you could pick up is anywhere between 30 or 3,000 to 50,000 gold, but after you've murdered all of the tiny little bugs and all non-boss monsters in the area, you can head outside, reset the instance, and repeat. Now, if you plan to farm here, I would definitely recommend doing this only if you have a monk or a druid that you can use to farm simply because they fixed the ability to use the Proving Grounds to teleport out just recently, and it's very, very long run back. Most definitely not worth it, 
unless you have some kind of class that can teleport in and out. But if you happen to pick up either of these fancy pants, you'll be able to sell them in the 200 to 250,000 gold range. Now we got a weapon, or finally something that isn't pants, I should say. It's the good old t -Boo's Blazing Longsword. An iconic weapon as far as any goes in the game, since this one was actually equipped by the dwarf in the original game manual, and many of you probably know what I'm speaking of. It was either the game manual or on the, the cover of like the flipbook thing or something, you know what I'm talking about. But in any case, this is a worldwide drop off monsters around level 60. So you might get lucky and pick it up anywhere, farming like older raid content of any kind, etc. However, if you want to flat out massacre monsters for a chance at it, then head down here to Silithus is the way to go. The mobs in this area work in a funny way that at certain levels they drop different loot, but as long as you're above level 60, then it will be on their loot table to have a chance of getting t -boos. This isn't also an ideal place to farm the Glorious and Vanguard leg plates. However, to do so, you have to create another character and lock their level so they don't get any more XP at exactly 58. That way you have the highest chance to get them. So if you want to do that, you can do this for the Vanguard and Glorious leg plates. But these mobs also work on an instant respawn timer. So the faster they die, the more loot you're going to get. Getting a group of five people will potential exponentially increase your uh, loot per hour, and this can usually be done by slapping a custom looking for group in up. However, it is quite rare, seeing as it isn't easily obtainable anymore from salvage crates, so expect to farm quite a long time before you happen to pick this sword up, though you will definitely acquire a decent amount of loot value by the time you manage to get one. When you finally do pick up the sword, Look at pricing it anywhere between 250,000 to 500,000 gold nowadays. It goes quite high. Now, if you're watching this in the future and this spot is fixed because they are destroying Silithus here in a very soon with a different patch, so I do not know if these monsters will even be in game anymore. But if that happens to be the case, you can't use this spot anymore, seeing as Silithus is getting destroyed. <laughs> But finally, the most expensive items still in-game come from none other than Uldaman. Many of you all know that I have a thing for Uldaman. I farmed it a lot, simply because I wanted a miner's hat of the deep for my own personal mogging pleasure. However, I never managed to get one. I have probably a combined total of 2,000 runs now. Still not even seen it. This is due to the extreme rarity of actually getting one. However, if you do happen to pick one up, I heard that recently one sold for 6 million gold. And yeah, that's right, 6 million gold. Okay, if you transfer that over and look at the value, let's say the person bought tokens to get all that gold. That means this hat cost them $750 worth of tokens in the US token price. That's 37.5 tokens simply to get 6 million gold. Pretty crazy, but Uldaman houses plenty of other items that have immense value, like the Papal Fez, which is very rare. Again, I haven't even received a Papal Fez in my 2000 runs, so again, it's very rare, it's all, all its own. And it runs 750 to a million gold range, but it is still technically a lot less rare than the Miner's Hat. Pendulum of Doom, another immensely rare item, only obtainable in the final chest, like the Miner's Hat of the Deep. But Almost all of the uniques from Uldaman are quite expensive. And on top of that, the monsters are in the perfect level range for extremely rare world drop patterns that typically sell in the 100,000 gold range to collectors. Overall, it is just an immensely profitable place if you're looking into uh, where to farm. But just remember that this is a lot of praying to RNG Jesus and throwing the dice, hoping you get it. So these items are extremely rare. And when you finally do happen to get one, it will take a long time to find a buyer. However, they are worth a ton. Now, just for a little bonus, I just want to uh, talk about Blackwing Lair here real quick. Not that it houses many expensive drops, just it's an overall really good place to farm. I just recommend Zerg clearing the place on all your alts and such for the sake of getting to Nefarian. 
which takes no time at all. You're looking at like seven to eight minute runs nowadays, um, since they nerfed the first boss to being extremely quick. Uh, it's not the fact that he houses anything super rare, but he does have a very high chance to drop patterns from vanilla that collectors like. And a lot of these patterns, uh, the vanilla patterns are all really, really rare, so they go 30 to 50,000 gold on average. And he also drops two BOE blue items every kill. And these can include the Orb of Deception, which is a toy nowadays, and it uh, sells for about 20k each. Uh, it's just a really quick place to farm if you're looking for a higher than average chance of getting something decently valued. Um, this is if you get bored of possibly rolling the dice at the other place. You can go give your chances here, which are far better than uh, many of these other farms. But anyways, if you uh, enjoyed this video, let me know. Blackwing Lair is one of my favorite places to farm. You can pick up a lot of great mogs here. Just another thing, you know, to look at while you're doing this. Thank you for watching, good luck in all your hunting, may the miner's hats be forever in your favor, and I will see you again real soon. Bye bye